So here it is early on a Saturday morning and uh, had a little trouble last night with my snow plow. Electric motor, over hydraulic, snowway snow plow. Doesn't want to go up and down anymore. So I'm going to take a few minutes to troubleshoot that and see uh, what I can do about getting that working again. Here's my power control for the snow plow. This truck used to have a bench seat in it, but I went to the junkyard. I got some bucket seats with a console out of a different style of Ford Ranger so I can have a nice place to mount my plow controls right here. I originally got this plow about five years ago or so with a busted and faded blade on it, which I replaced for pretty cheap. I think I paid 300 bucks for the plow. I had to build my own mount and put a couple of hoses on there and stuff. So I'm going to take this cover off and get looking at that electric motor. By the way, if you don't have a set of these ratcheting wrenches from Craftsman, be sure to order some for your birthday. So this is the reservoir right here. In the center right here is the pump. This is the valve assembly and we have the electric motor. I'm going to take this apart so I can get the electric motor off of here. Here's a modification I made right here. I added this uh, variable um, pressure switch here so that I can adjust the down pressure. But anyway, I'm going to take this apart and get this motor off of here. First, I'm going to unplug it right here so I don't risk any sort of shorts or sparks or anything. So if I take a look at least the parts diagrams I must have printed out some time ago, I can see that that electric motor looks like it's bolted to that center part uh, the way any electric motor might be with two long bolts running through the motor assembly into that uh, this middle housing. I can see this has a hose clamp strapping this down and I'm going to remove a couple of these wires There's a couple of Phillips head screws to get the back cover off put the nuts and washers back on the spot they came off of, you won't lose them. You know, so whenever I can, I do that. I know where they go. I don't have to like, dig around in a bucket of random parts to try to figure out what it is I had done days or weeks or hours or minutes before. I can just know that that's the nut for that. So whenever it's possible, that's what I do. So that special little short bolt would be hard to replace. It's got to be that size, you know, drill that bolt right down into the spinning parts of the motor. Just attaches that ground cable to the case. So you lost that, you try to use the wrong bolt, you know, you cause yourself a lot of irritation. Just put that back in the hole where it came from, it'll be there when it's time to put this thing back together. break those loose. A little coupling right here. And look what I did right there. I stuck the leg of my camera tripod right in that bucket of used oil right there and made a little mess. I hate buckets of used oil. I put the ground on that stud that's on the case and I'm going to touch the positive to that post right there. The whole motor could jump around if it actually starts spinning, so I'm going to hold on to it and just give it a quick test. I want to see a little spark at least. Yeah. Dead short should give me a spark, so it's not a dead short in this. There we go. Actually, it started turning a little bit. So I think we're... Yeah. Let's take it apart and see. I'm also going to mark it, just so when, the, when I go to put it back together, I got everything clocked in the right position. There's my mark. Loosened her up. 
That's how we get it off. These are the brushes, just like on any DC motor or any motor that's got brushes. They're spring loaded, usually in some sort of a bracket. And as they wear down, they feed out, feed out, feed out until there's none left. We have a problem here. This bearing and this end cap is wore out. So I just pull this little bit of metal and it's right in here. All right, so far that was uh, kind of disappointing. I uh, was hoping I could just clean up the armature and brushes and make it work, but this bearing is gone, really damaged. And I believe that this material I found right here inside that came out of there is the parts of that bearing. Maybe a retainer or load washer or something. And it was inside this case. And I cleaned it all off and looked at it. And I can tell that it, it did contact in here, but it didn't rub off any of the wiring. It didn't touch the wiring. The wiring is all intact. Could be repaired if I had a bearing. I don't know if I could ever find a bearing for this. I'll go ahead and finish taking this apart. It's all destroyed, of course. And yeah. So in order to get that bearing off of there, I need this bearing separator. Now this is a very large bearing separator. It's too big for this job, but I think the lips of it just get underneath the edge of that bearing right there. And then I can hold on the bearing separator, support the bearing separator, and press down on that, and press it out in my press. But let's say you didn't have a press, and you would want to support this, you would want to find some way to strike this, you know, tap this bearing, it's not going to be that much pressure, tap this post right here without mushrooming out the end of it and damaging the splines. So let's see how that goes. So, um, here's something that might work. This is for uh, putting on that pickle fork and separating ball joints and stuff. It's got a little cone shape on the end. And I'll sit right there. I'll be able to just gently tap that through. If you don't have a large bearing separator, buy a smaller one at Harbor Freight. I bought this one at Harbor Freight. It was about 50 bucks, but I needed a large one for a particular job. nylon bit. I'm going to save that. So doing a little research in my office here trying to find some replacement parts. I can find this motor item number 22 and find item number 22 right here 9601551 and that's the snowway part number. And I can do some research and do some lookups and see if I can find cross-reference numbers for other manufacturers or resellers who might have that number. And I find motors available from about $120 to $240 as a replacement aftermarket part for that plow. Uh, my other choice is to try to find a bearing. Couldn't find any numbers for the bearings, couldn't cross-reference any separate parts, even brush kits or anything for that motor. All I could find was was aftermarket replacement uh, motors, uh, the whole thing. Couldn't find any brushes for it. But we did measure up the bearing and I made some conversion to millimeter here and I looked at a supplier to find some bearings and I think my bearing is a uh and looks like I can get one bearing for six dollars and twenty two cents and this is from this Ertone Electric Company.
they also have brushes and I'm gonna take a look at those I use this Wolfram Alpha to do conversions and to look up other interesting facts and figures it's kind of a cool website you should check it out and I do believe I've probably found the right brushes Maybe that one or that one to go on this unit but I don't know if that's necessary at this time I know the armature is as wide as what I set this caliper on if I push those brushes up into their holders I can see I probably have maybe a quarter of an inch or more of brush remaining uh, on each brush I think that'll be fine I'm not going to replace the brushes I'm just going to get that one bearing So I got my new bearings in the mail. Got my replacement bearing. Here's my pieces of my old bearing right here. And uh, this is a ball bearing that has a, a deep groove that the balls roll in. You can see the groove right here. And that's so it can take force in this direction without coming apart. You know, it's kind of different than a tapered roller bearing or something. And um, this bit of metal right here that hold that covers the balls tore up and came apart from the old bearing and that's the bit of metal that was rubbing on this rotor here and I've cleaned it up and I'm ready to try to put that bearing on there and and reassemble it I just want to get the job done because I want to go out and plow snow now I could have bought a whole nother motor for about 140 bucks and that have been a good solution too but Where's the joy in that? I think I paid six dollars a piece for these bearings because they were the special bearings. They had a ten dollar minimum order. I could have got the bearing for two dollars and fifty cents. So I bought the cheap bearing, but I bought their six dollar bearing, and also bought a bearing for the other end. I don't know if it's supposed to have a plastic part or a metal part, but the one that's on here has a plastic part. I'm kind of thinking that someone replaced this bearing, didn't replace this one, and then that one failed. There's probably several ways you can go about getting a bearing onto a shaft like that. You can heat this bearing up in the oven for, I don't know, at 180 degrees for an hour until it's real hot, and then it expands. You could probably just set it right down on there and slide right down. Or you can just uh, use a press with the right size arbor and press that down on there. Or you can kind of do a garage shade tree mechanic and you can use a socket or something like that that just presses on only the inside race that's where all the force is and drive it down with a hammer I'm, that's the method I'm going to use although I do have a, an oven and I do have a press but I'm going to just tap that on there like I might do uh, in my backyard I like to use a little emery cloth or here I have a, just a scrap of 220 grit just to clean up that shaft a little bit so there's no burrs or grime or something that's going to, you know, give me a hard time pressing that bearing on there. Helps it be centered and I can get it all the way down, flush and square. Spring wash in place. Just in case it wasn't hard enough, I'm going to work those brushes first up onto the bearing one at a time and then up onto the armature one at a time. Got them up on the bearing now. I'm holding the uh, spring washer in place with my finger.
when you're manipulating those brushes around, you don't want to gouge them all up and you know, damage them. You want them to be smooth and curved just the way they were. Spring washer in place. There we go. And I want to make sure I turn this to the right position. I should be able to look for my mark right here. And I know I want that to be right there. We'll clean this cap up right here with a little emery, or I have some 220 right here. Just to get that corrosion off there and let that fit to that bearing real nice and I believe we marked the end of this thing too there's my mark and there's my matching mark right here here because I know that bearing fits in this part. I also know there's a little bit of a tight fit, you know, just a tight fit against this outside part. I know we had these small, long, thin bolts. It spins nicely. I can look in there and see the brush. Each of the brushes are in position. Looks good. Now I can sit here and put this thing back together.
Alright, well that was pretty fun. Got that motor fixed. Went out and cleared the snow off the driveway. Good deal.